All right, good to see each and every one of you tonight. Let's grab a hymn book and turn to page uh, 618. 618 in our hymnals. Let's all, let's all stand. Good to have Miss Miriam on the piano tonight. Thank you, Miss Miriam. Remain standing for a word of prayer. Brother Joshua, Jeremiah, will you lead it? All right. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he Lord indeed Stand up for Jesus Ye soldiers of the cross Lift high his royal banner It must not, it must not suffer Stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey, for to the mighty conflict in this his glorious day, ye that are men now serve him against a numbered foe, let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up for Jesus, ye soldier of the cross. Lift high his royal banner. It must not, it must not suffer loss. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. Ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor. Each piece put on with prayer, where duty calls or danger, be never wanting them. Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. Jesus, the strive will not be long. The nay, the noise of battle, the next of victor song. To him that overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner. It must not, it must not suffer. Jeremiah. Let's pray. So, Father, as we come together this evening, Lord, we thank you for 
allowing us to have this reprieve where we can get away from the hustle and bustle of the week, Father, and we can come together and worship you. Lord, your word says where two or three are gathered in your midst, in your name, you'll be in their midst. So, Lord, we come together this evening asking that you meet with us. Give Brother Josh the words we need to hear. Be with Pastor and Miss Ardeth as they're tra traveling. Give them safety on the roads. And, Father, give us the strength we need to be witnesses, to be the salt and light throughout the rest of the week that you've called us to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, just a couple of announcements to be mindful of, if you would. Uh, like I said in prayer, please continue to pray for Pastor and Miss Ardeth. Uh, I think they're on their way back. I'll be honest, Mom sent me a text yesterday while I was in school asking how things were going, and Jennifer was talking to her after that, so I'm like, she knows how things are going. I don't have time to stop and talk. So I haven't heard a word from mom and dad since they left on Monday morning. So most of you all probably know better than I do how they're doing, but I'm sure they're doing well and they're on their way back um, or getting ready to be on their way back. So if you would, uh, keep them in your prayers. I did um, check to make sure we were online, and Miss Belinda's online. She says if everything looks well um, or continues as it's going, Bob should be able to come home by Friday. So uh, that's a blessing. Um, continue to pray that God will continue to give him healing and uh, he can come home. I was able to see the pictures um, from earlier, that, I guess it was Monday, um, where they were able to see him Monday night. And uh, the smiling faces on everybody's face was such a blessing. So uh, please continue to pray for Brother Bob as he's recovering. Do have a couple of announcements to be mindful of. I have been mentioning this wrong all the last two weeks. So, if you're listening, PSF Family Fun Night is tomorrow evening at 6.30, not Friday evening at 6.30. If you come on Friday evening, you'll be by yourself, all right? I'm probably going to be in Indiana somewhere uh, delivering a freezer, so... Uh, Tomorrow evening, 6.30, um, plan on PSF. Um, we are planning on meeting out at the pavilion. You say, well, I have no part in the school. Come on out. We're going to have hot dogs and pork burgers and whatever anybody else brings, all right? So uh, looking forward to a fun time uh, tomorrow evening for Family Fun Night. August 30th, Promotion Sunday. Um, Please keep that in mind. Men's Prayer Breakfast, September 5th at 8 o'clock. Also September 5th, teen activity. Um, so uh, teens, be mindful of that. A few dates to remember. Please, please, please be praying. Uh, revival, September 13th through 18th. If there's ever a time we need to hear from God, uh, it's now. Uh, so please pray. Uh, not that the Lord will give Brother Harris the words way back then, but God will prepare our hearts beginning now for the words he's going to give Brother Harris so we can uh, come together and worship God and uh, receive the things that God has for us during this time of revival with the Harris family. September 18th and 19th, Ladies Conference in Lincoln, Illinois. If you have any questions, please see Miss Nicky. September 23rd, Awana begins, but August 30th, uh, we have a meeting right after uh, morning service over in the chapel, so please uh, be mindful of that. If you'd like to help out, we could use the help in Awana this year. September 24th and 25th, Junior Convention for the Academy. Uh, if you're interested in helping, whether that's judging, kitchen setup, etc., please see Miss Rachel. I know she was talking to a, uh, another school earlier this week, and uh, they were, Lord willing, we're going to be there. So uh, looking forward to a good time at Junior Convention, September 24th and 25th.
All right, I stalked Preacher on my phone with Find My Friends. He is in Riverview, Florida, about 980 miles from here. So there, there's a little bit of an update for you, Jeremiah. Um, teenagers, we're planning on September 5th going to the Mississippi Mine Trap. I hope you get your thinking caps dusted off this week and next week before we go. Um, I contacted the Mississippi Mine Trap, asked them, tried to negotiate a discount for us instead of their usual $20 price, and I'm not the deal maker that President Trump is. I only got a $3 discount for everybody. So we're going to save $3 off the price. The cost of the Mississippi Mine Trap is going to be $17 per person. Um, if you're planning on going, make sure you see me, let me know. That way we can also discuss and work out a time that Saturday that we're going to go out to that. All right? Thank you. All right, we've got some busy folks around here. I know Brother Jeremiah and Rachel have been going at it. You know, I've never seen anybody spend so much time at church as they do. Church or school, they're over there all the time. And if you want to find them, don't call them home. Just come by the church. They'll be here. Amen. <laughs> hey, is this how busy they are? They, they're so busy, they don't even have time to get their guard stuff out. And that's, that's being too busy, isn't it? So... You pray for them. They, they need some help there. They, they got a lot going on. All right, let's uh, look at hymn 423. This is going to be our fellowship hymn. We're going to sing a couple verses, and then we're going to wave at everybody and for fellowship, and then we'll come back and sing the third and the fourth verses. Uh, our offering tonight will be, in, when you all leave, the offering plates will be in the back if anybody wants to give an offering. So... Uh, I don't know where Ethan is, but Ethan, could you get the offering plates and put them in the back, please? All right, let's all stand. This 423, hymn 423. <laughs> My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. All right, let's do a little fellowshipping. Hi, Missy. Third verse, his oath is cut, but not his blood. Support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand when he shall come with trumpet sound oh may i then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand 
before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. What a good song that is. All right, let's look over to 824. Now, I kind of sprung one on Jer Brother Jeremiah and Rachel. They're going to sing for us tonight, but I didn't. They're going to um, go to sing, and I thought maybe we'd get one of the boys to play their instruments. And so it, anyway, we're going to have them sing for us tonight, and we appreciate them filling in that space for us tonight. 824. All the three. You all may be seated on this one, all right? How's that? Okay. Let's sing the first, second, third, uh, fourth, and fifth. All right. Okay. Oh, can share the voice like Jesus by his presence all divine. True and tender, pure and precious. Oh, how blessed to call him mine. All that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. And the fairest of 10,000. And my blessed Lord, I see. All right. Hey, Mrs. Marion, let's change that to 816. Have thine own way, Lord, okay? 816. Have my, thine own way, Lord. Okay, what if it were today? Jesus is coming to earth again. What if it were today? Coming in power and love to reign. What if it were today? Coming to claim his chosen bride. All the redeemed and purified. Over the whole were scattered wide. What if it were today? Glory, glory, joy to my heart will bring. Glory, glory, when we shall crown him king. Glory, glory, haste to prepare the way. Glory, glory, Jesus may come today. Last verse, all right. Faithful and true would he find us here. If he should come today, watching in gladness and not in fear, if he should come today, signs of his coming multiply, morning light breaks the eastern sky, watching the time is drawing nigh. What if it were today? Glory, glory, joy to my heart will bring. Glory, glory, we shall need crown him king. Glory, glory, haste to prepare the way. Glory, glory, Jesus may come today. Amen. All right. 
Brother Jeremiah and Rachel are going to take us to the preaching. Thank you, Jeremiah, Rachel. Thank you for, you know, pulling that out on the spot right there before church, Brother Dan asked. Hey, y'all want to sing a special? Kind of reminded me, Nikki, kind of reminded me of Brother Chuck back home in Virginia. He would ask right there at the beginning of the service, and you never knew who he was going to ask. It was just whoever he felt led to ask. He would ask to sing a special that night, and so Mom and Dawn and all the other ladies and men in the church, they had to be ready, have their CDs with them because they played, uh, sang a lot of songs with the CD music, and so they always had to be ready. I remember when we lived there, Mom always had to have her CD case with 
10, 12 CDs in there of accompaniment music so that she'd be ready to sing for pastor for the service as a special just in case he asked right before the service. So thank you, Jeremiah and Rachel, for your willingness to do that. Uh, I'm kind of surprised and kind of honored. Preacher asked me to preach a couple weeks ago for him and I Shared, got up and preached, and here just a few weeks later, he, he's out of town and asked me to fill in for him. So I'm, I'm honored and I appreciate this opportunity. I was talking to my mom on the phone last night, and she told me the last time I preached and I was preaching on light, she said at their church, the lights all went out. And their preacher had to get up, somebody had to bring their cell phone up and turn the flashlight on on their phone so that the preacher, their pastor, could see his notes so that they could finish out the service and his sermon. And hopefully nothing like that happens with my message this evening because this evening I'm preaching on (laughs) COVID-19. So, Lord, please, please help us here. Um... You know, way back when this thing first started, a uh, pastor or someone had shared the verse, Psalm 91, 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. You know, that kind of seems what this virus is. It kind of seems like a noisome pestilence, something we're continually hearing about. People are always talking about, and it's a, it's a pestilence, a virus that can affect our health, that can weaken our immune system, affect our lungs and how we breathe. And even Brother Bob has experienced that, you know, firsthand. And preacher's son, Andy, has been affected by that there at his home down in Tennessee. And way back when this thing had started, I had seen a post on Facebook, and then I thought, you know, that's a really good post. And I reshared that post, and several people here saw it on my Facebook page, and they liked it and commented. And so this evening, the post was simply, let's spread John 3.16 instead of COVID-19. Now we all know John 3.16, probably one of the most popular verses, one of the most well-known verses in the world. People who don't even go to church can usually quote John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave of his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Tonight I want us to look at these two topics and kind of compare them one with another. Last time I I preached it was more of a topical message on light and tonight it's kind of a topical message again but with my favorite style of preaching a little bit more of expository where we look at a passage of scripture and kind of expand on that as we look at John 3.16. Brother Chuck you'd be proud of me because tonight I've got seven different points and two sub points for each point. So I've got about 14 different points that we're going to look at this evening. Last time I preached, I think we were done by quarter till. It's 728. I don't know if we're going to make that time again this evening, but we'll see how, how the Lord leads us here. Before we get started, let's go ahead and take a moment, bow our heads and pray, and ask the Lord to speak to our hearts this evening, and to use this fool up here behind the pulpit for his honor and glory. Lord, I thank you this evening that we have the honor and the privilege to come to you, to worship you, to magnify your name. Lord, I pray that you'll bless me now as I share your word. Lord, I pray that you'll cleanse me and remove me of self and fill me with your spirit. Allow your spirit to have full reign in my mouth and in our hearts this evening. I pray that you'll speak to our hearts and challenge our lives as we look at these two topics this evening. Lord, I pray that you'll bless the service, bless the preaching of your word. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So looking at these two topics of COVID-19 or John 3.16, what do you want? You know, we we could very clearly say we've seen some of the results of COVID-19 and we've seen results of John 3.16 and we can very clearly say, hey, you know what, I want John 3.16. Well, let's look at these topics and let's compare the two together. 
You know, COVID-19 is originated, they say that it originated out of China at a lab by man. Mankind is totally depraved and wicked. Genesis chapter 6 verse 5, God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And because of the wickedness of man, God decided that he would send a flood, that he would destroy the entire earth with a flood. God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So God destroyed the earth with a flood. And Matthew, Jesus says, as in the days of Noah, so will the days be of my coming. When Jesus comes back again, we're going to see the world full of wickedness, just as it was in the days of Noah. Mankind is totally depraved and wicked. In the teenage Sunday school class, we've started and we've been doing a study in the book of Romans. And in Romans chapter 1, we saw the wickedness of the Gentiles. We saw homosexuality. We saw idolatry. We saw blasphemy. We saw all kinds of wickedness of the Gentiles. And then in chapter 2, we saw that the Jews, well, they said, oh, we're Jews. We're God's chosen people. Paul said, hey, no, wait a minute. You're not without excuse. Even though you're Jews, even though you're God's chosen people, you're not without excuse. You're still sinners and wicked just the same. Romans chapter 3, we see, Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We see mankind is wicked and sinful. And with the origination of this virus, I see it's come from man. Now, what was the purpose behind developing it? I don't know. But I see that it came from man. Psalms 52 verse 1 says this. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? Mischief, wickedness. Our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Mankind is wicked. But Psalms 52 1 goes on and says, The goodness of God endureth continually. You know, God is good. And God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Psalms 34 verse 8, one of our theme verses for homecoming one year was, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man that trusteth in him. Romans chapter 2 verse 4 says, or despises the riches of his or God's goodness and forbearance and long suffering, knowing that not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Paul was trying to t- point out to the Jews, to his Roman, to the Romans that he was writing to. Hey, God is long suffering. God is patient, and He is good, continually giving you opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to let us repent of our sin and come to Him. The goodness of God leadeth to repentance. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Here we see God is good. God is patient. God is kind. God is continually giving us the opportunity to repent of our sins. You know, James says, for every good and perfect gift, where does it come from? Does it come from mankind? No. Every good and perfect gift descendeth from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God is good. So we see John 3.16 starts out for God, and we see that God is good. But this pandemic Not only has it originated with man, but this pandemic has caused a lot of fear and anxiety. This pandemic has caused many to feel fearful, uncertain, anxious, unsure about the future, unsure about the economy, unsure about their jobs, unsure about even their neighbors and co-workers and the people that they come into contact with. Well, what what if they have the virus and they don't have any symptoms? And then I'll get the virus. And then what if, what if, what if, how, 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 how am I going to treat it? How am I going to protect myself? What am I going to do? You know, at work, they have a questionnaire with a long list of symptoms, common everyday things like a headache. 
or seasonal allergies, runny nose and congestion. I, I get that sometimes, you know, during the summer with the heat, with a change of seasons. And it, this, having to answer these questions continually every day I go to work makes me kind of fearful and wonder, is this, is this just my regular allergies or is it COVID? What is it? Could it be? What if, you know, this pandemic has caused a lot of fear and uncertainty in our world? I believe that there's a lot of unprecedented fear. There's an overabundance of fear that's been caused by this pandemic from this virus. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 though says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. John 3.16 says, For God so loved. No, I would much rather have love than fear. Wouldn't you? God is love. Take your Bibles, turn to First John, John chapter 4 and verse number 7. 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 7. I want to read a few verses here for you that talk about how God is love. 1 John chapter 4 verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. He, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him herein is love not that we loved God but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins beloved if God so loved us we ought also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. You see here in all these verses that I just read that God is love. Many people try to question the fact that God is love. They try to question, well, if God is so loving, why does he allow this pandemic. If God is so loving, why does he allow bad things to happen to good people? Isn't that a big question that we hear all the time? Oh, I, I'm a good person, so why, do, why does God allow bad things to happen to me? Well, we already looked and saw that we're not good people. All have sinned. We're totally wicked. We're totally depraved. We've all come short of the glory of God, but that doesn't change the fact that God is love and he loves us. You know, I love my girls, but sometimes I have to let bad things happen to them. You know, sometimes they're a little disobedient. I give them my word and I tell them what I want them to do and they choose to disobey. What happens after that would seem like a bad thing to them, right? But what is it? It's the chastisement of their father. Scripture tells us that the Lord loveth his children whom he chasteneth. Why does God allow bad things to happen? Well, because he loves us. He wants us, he's trying to draw us closer to him. He's trying to help us correct a bad behavior. He's trying to help us to go the way that we should go. You know, God is love. Sometimes we have to suffer consequences for our own choices, our own actions. You know, I teach my, I can teach my girls not to play in the street and I punish them. I chastise them if they go out in the street without mom or dad. What am I trying to do? I'm trying to teach them. I'm trying to protect them. I'm trying to show them I love and care for them. 
God is love. This passage of scripture, we see that God loved us so much that he gave his only son. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Here in 1 John 4, we see God gave his son for us. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, one of my favorite passages of scripture says, but God commendeth his love or showed his love toward us. He proved it. You know, Missouri, we're the show me state. God said, okay, I love you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it. Here's my son. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, while we were wicked, while we were depraved, Christ died for us. Love is a choice and God made a choice. I'm going to love this wicked world. I'm going to love. God chose to love and to give us his love instead of allowing us to suffer fear. You know, looking at this virus, I see another thing. I see isolation. This pandemic has forced us into isolation several times. I think of Brother Bob there at the hospital going week after week after week, over a month now being isolated in his room, his family not able to come and see him. Isolation has been caused by this pandemic. The whole country back in the spring was asked to stay home. Businesses, close your business. Restaurants, close. Unless you're a grocery store or an essential business, close up shop. Everybody stay home for two weeks. You remember that? They were trying to get us isolated, trying to separate us, trying to stop the virus. You know, the whole country was asked to go into isolation. You know, and now we have social distancing. We want to try to help prevent the spread of the virus. So let's all stand six feet apart. Let's stay away from one another. Isolation, quarantine. But look at John 3, 16. Look, there's a couple of inclusive words in the verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, the world and whosoever, some inclusive words. God wants to include everybody in his plan of salvation. He wants everyone to experience his wonderful love. You know, like the song we sang sang as children, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Each and every person is precious to God. God doesn't just want the people of Palmyra, just the people of Missouri, just the people of the United States. No, God wants the whole world to experience his love. Whosoever means anyone, whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, whether you're in the United States, whether in Europe or Asia or Australia or even Antarctica, it doesn't matter where you are. God loved the world. Whosoever means anyone and everyone. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, his promise to return as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You see the difference here between COVID-19 forcing us into isolation to kind of isolate ourselves, to try to protect ourselves, and John 3, 16, all inclusion, all the world come to Christ. I'm not willing that any should perish, but that all, everyone, anyone, come to repentance in Christ. Isolation versus inclusion. You know, something else that I see with this COVID-19 and John 3, 16, with COVID-19, I saw selfishness. Y'all remember back in springtime? You remember the great toilet paper shortage of March and April and May of 2020? (laughs) 
The paper towel shortage, the grocery shelves, they were bare and empty. I remember I was ringing one guy up through the checkout. He bought 48 cans, 48 cans of Chef Boy RD. Why? Because there was really nothing else left on the shelf. <laughs> there at work, they gave us all a little pen. Has a roll of toilet paper on it. it says, Rolling Strong to kind of commemorate and have some fun of us working through and dealing with that great big toilet paper shortage of COVID-19. You know, but what happened there? It was because of the selfishness. Everybody wanted, they wanted to get what they needed and they were afraid that they were going to run out, which I have no problem with people getting what they need, but the selfishness, oh, I've got to have mine. You know, I I was calling Nikki. She'll vouch for me. I was feeling a little selfish. Anytime there was toilet paper on the shelf, I said, Nikki, do we need toilet paper? She said, no. (laughs) Nikki, do we need toilet paper? She said, no. I'm like, Nikki, we've got three girls and you here at the house. Are you sure? She's like, we're good. We're good. I was like, okay. All right. I'm kind of sweating this thing a little bit. No, but we were fine on toilet paper. I ended up one day, I went ahead and just bought some. That way, just in case anybody here needed some, I could help you out. I could give you some, and didn't I give some? Yeah. But you know what? That's the difference. John, COVID-19 was selfishness. Hey, I'm going to get all I need. I'm going to hoard up what I need, what I want. But John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave he gave. God didn't look at us and say, well, they don't deserve for me to give them anything. They're wicked reprobate choir directors. They're wicked, sinful Christians. They're wicked, sinful people. They don't deserve me to give them anything. I've had, I have exactly what they need, but I'm going to keep it for myself. no. That wasn't God's attitude. God's attitude was one of love, and so he gave. And God didn't just give anything. Oh, he's like, well, I don't really need this anymore. I'm going to, I'll let you have some of that. I've got plenty of toilet paper, so here, Miss Jane, you can have three rolls. No, God gave his best. God gave his most valuable treasure, his only, his only begotten son. Jeremiah has eight begotten sons. But I can tell you right now, it'd be very hard press for Jeremiah to give up any one of those eight begotten sons. Why? Because they're precious to Jeremiah. They're precious to their father. And he wouldn't just give one of them up just because he has seven more. No, He dearly loves each and every one. God the Father only had one son, his only begotten son. And the only way Jeremiah would ever give up one of his sons is if his son chose to give themself. That's what Christ did. Christ said, Father, let me give myself. Let me give my life, shed my blood on the cross as payment for their sins. So that they can have their sins forgiven. So that they can have eternal life. Father, let me give myself. You know what the father said? He didn't say, no way, son. I'm not going to let you do it. They're not worth it. No. The father said, okay, son. I love them. You love them. I'll give you. I'll accept you to give your life for them, to die in their place, to shed your blood as payment for their sins on the cross. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. COVID-19, here we see another emotion. We see doubt. You know, when this virus thing first came out and we were seeing it all on the news We kind of wondered about it. We're like, really? Is this thing really real? You know, nobody's really getting sick around here. 
is, is this really such a big deal that we got to stay home for two weeks? That we got to start all wearing masks everywhere we go, washing our hands for 20 seconds every hour? You know, it, that I got to stay six feet apart. Is this thing really real? There was a lot of doubt. You know, there were many who doubted if it was real because they hadn't seen the effects of it. And we know that it's real. We, we all have people who we know, I've already mentioned, that we know have been infected with the virus. Brother Bob, preacher son, Andy, down in Tennessee. I have co-workers who had been quarantined for weeks who had been infected with the virus. No, but there's doubt. We no longer doubt over its existence. We know it's real. But there's doubt. Well, should it... Should I open my business? Doubt. Should, should the kids go back to school? Doubt. Should, should I wear a mask? Will it really help me? If I do wear this mask, if I do do this social distance, is it, is it really going to help? Is it really any good? Is it going to be enough? There's a lot of doubt surrounding this virus. But you know what the opposite of doubt is? Belief. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, what? Believeth in him. Believe means to have faith in, to rely on, to have confidence in. We can have confidence and we can believe on Jesus Christ as our savior. We can fully rely on him to save us in him alone. I'm confident this evening that Jesus Christ has saved me. As a young child, I remember watching a movie at church about the end times, about the second coming of Christ. And I was concerned about my soul. I was concerned about my salvation. And I went home to my parents and I told my parents my concerns, said, Mom, Dad, I want to be saved. And they took God's word and they showed me how I can put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And I believe, I am confident, I can rely on the fact that Jesus Christ has promised us in his word that he would save us. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Doesn't say maybe, might be, or if be. Thou shalt be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, you too can experience salvation if you believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you believe in his shed blood on the cross as payment for your sins, you can have salvation. You can be saved from the horrible punishment of sin. Many people are afraid of COVID-19 because they believe they will die if they get it. The current death rate, I looked it up this afternoon, this morning. The current death count worldwide is 781,123. Over three quarters of a million people have died from this pandemic. In the U.S., 171,000 people have died. In our state of Missouri, the state of Missouri alone, 1,420 people have died. You know, many people fear the virus because they don't want to die, which is understandable. I don't want to die. I want to live. The death of a loved one can be a difficult thing. We experienced that earlier this year with my family and with the passing away of my mother-in-law, Miss Pam. It can be a sad, difficult time. We you know I've noticed primarily the only thing I hear on the news is, oh, there's new cases, the, the case counts rising up, and there's this many deaths, this many deaths. And it seems like it's always focused on the negative. So let me just throw in here, what I saw as far as numbers recovered. You don't usually hear those, so I just want to share those. Worldwide recovery is 14,138,936. In 
And in the United States, the recovery is 1,898,159. You know, this high recovery, this large number, far outweighs the death rate. And it's encouraging to hear that, but it doesn't change the fact and it doesn't downplay the possibility of death from this virus. But worse than dying from this virus is dying in sin without Jesus Christ. That's a guarantee. You can get this virus and you may or may not die. You may recover or you could die. But without Jesus Christ as your Savior, you will die in your sin and spend eternity in hell. Revelations chapter 21 verse 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says, For the wages or the payment for sin is death. It's guaranteed. Sin leads to death. There is no recovery rate, but there is a gift. Romans 6 23 says, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What is that gift? What is that gift of God that gives us eternal life? Well, I already said it. It's his son, Jesus Christ. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Does that mean if I put my faith in Jesus Christ, I'll never contract COVID-19? No, it doesn't. But it does guarantee if I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I will have a home in heaven with God. I will have eternal life with him, everlasting life, worshiping and praising the Lord forever. There is death and there is life. What would you rather have this evening? COVID-19 or John 3.16? I would much rather have John 3.16. For God so loved the world, including me, that he gave his only begotten son, that even though I was a wicked sinner, he still loved me. And he gave his only son to die on the cross and shed his blood as payment for my sins. So that I can believe on him and have everlasting life. Oh, I'd rather have John 3.16 and I'm so glad that I do. I'm so glad that God has given me his word. I believe many of you here have John 3.16. You've put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ to save you to forgive you of your sins, to take you to heaven and give you a home in heaven with the Lord. But there's one more comparison I want to make between COVID-19 and John 3.16. How's it spread? COVID-19 is spread by droplets, they say, by bacteria and viruses coming out, droplets coming from your nose and your mouth. That's why they say wear a mask so that you can protect others. If you have it, which you may or may not, you don't know, wear a mask so that droplets from your nose, from your mouth don't come out and then land on an object or float in the air and infect somebody else. But John 3.16 is spread by his disciples droplets and disciples those who've put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ those who said I want to learn from the Lord John 3:16 is spread through the mouth of those that believe on Christ Jesus said in Mark 16:15 go ye where into all the world 
and preach the gospel to every creature. Why? Because God so loved the world. He says, okay, I want you to now go to the world. I want you to go and preach the gospel. What's the gospel? It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right, Micah? We, we've taught that to the teens in Sunday school and in our Wednesday night Bible study. The gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. His shed blood on the cross as payment for our sins, as I've mentioned time and time again this evening. So what do you want? <laughs> well, we know we want John 3.16. But what are you spreading? Are you spreading it? Are you telling others and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ? You know, I I shared with you all a few weeks back. If I get one of those phone calls from a phone number that I don't recognize, it happened to me today, again. Phone number from... Somewhere down in Florida, or no, it was Georgia. It was down in Georgia, Americus, Georgia. Didn't recognize the number. I don't know anybody down there. I'll answer that. Hello, Jesus loves you. (laughs) Click. Oh, okay. You know what I was doing? Spreading the gospel. Spreading John 3.16, for God so loved the world. What are you spreading? Are you spreading COVID-19 or John 3.16? Let's bow our heads and pray. Lord, I thank you this evening. Lord, I thank you for the privilege that we've had to meet together here. Lord, I thank you for giving me these thoughts to share This evening. Lord, I pray that we'll all be spreading your word. We'll be spreading John 3.16, the gospel. Spreading your love and the truth of your word. Your love of Jesus Christ. How he died on the cross as payment for our sins. Lord, I pray that you'll bless us now during this invitation time. Lord, I thank you for the protection that you've given us so far from this virus. And Lord, I ask that you continue to protect us and bless us with your love. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Let's uh, turn to hymn 613. Let's all stand. Trusting Jesus. Simply trusting every day, trusting through a stormy way, even when my faith is small, trusting Jesus that is all.
All right, thank you everyone for coming this evening. Um, Be mindful, pray for Bob. We've heard some good news that if things continue to go well with Bob, um, he may get to come home Friday, I believe. So praise the Lord for those good reports there. Pray for Preacher as they're traveling back. And then pray for Ethan. I believe he has a doctor's appointment later this week he's concerned about. Cindy Cindy Meddy is having surgery tomorrow. Gallbladder taken out. Okay. Cindy Meddy's having surgery tomorrow. Pray for her. Okay. Debbie had surgery today, may be able to come home Friday. All right. Any other prayer requests this evening? Brother Howard's son. Brother Howard, how's your son doing? He, I just talked to him before service. He said his legs are going. The bullet did hit his spine and it had fragments. Okay, so continue to pray for Brother Howard's son, the Chuck. So be praying for Darlene and her recovery. Brother Pat, your mom. <laughs> she likes those puzzles, doesn't she? Brother Dan, would you come pray for these requests and then close us in a word of prayer? Is that in old Mexico or somewhere in Mexico? I'm not for sure. Okay. Okay. All right. Brother Dan. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your many blessings and we thank you that you are a God that listens. And Lord, we just ask you to uh, first of all, we just thank you for the praises, Lord, of Brother Pat's mom doing better, Lord, and and Brother Bob doing better, Lord, and and for being with preacher and artists as they are traveling, just continue to be with them, Lord. And we just ask you to be with um, Darlene as she's in the hospital, just heal her body according to your will and give the doctors wisdom there. Be with the one that Rachel mentioned that has the COVID in, in, um, in another state and just ask you to uh, just take them through this, Lord, be your will. And just ask you to continue to be with Andy and bless him. Be with Debbie as she's recovering. Be with Dottie as she's recovering. Lord, there's so many that's sick out there. Be with uh, Cindy Meddy now that she's going to have surgery tomorrow. Guide the doctors. Give them wisdom. And just be with every request, Lord. A lot of times we don't remember it. Our finite minds, Lord, is, is pretty feeble. But, Lord, we know that you do, and we just ask you that you would hear these requests and honor them and continue to be with us, be with our church, strengthen it, be with our upcoming revival. And thank you for the message that Brother uh, Josh has brought us tonight. Help us to take it to heart and spread the gospel of John 3.16. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.